musical structure form prescribed for IGCSE Cambridge music compiled by Vonali Benberg. We're going to look at binary, ternary, ritornello, rondo, da capo aria, minuet and trio, sonata form, theme and variation, and the ground bass. How to identify the structure? Structures. Composers use structure to shape and give balance to their music. Like the other musical elements, certain musical structures were used in different musical periods. For example, binary form was mainly used in Baroque dances and sonata form was used mainly in the classical period. How to identify the structure of a piece? When you are trying to identify the structure of a piece, you will often find at least one of the following features will help you identifying the different sections of the music. Repeated sections. You might be able to find sections that are repeated and then be able to work out if there is a pattern. Double bars. You might see a double bar line, sometimes with a repeat, at the end of a section. This can help you identify the starts and ends of sections. Keys and cadences. Conventionally, some structures modulate to specific keys at certain points in the music. There are likely to be clear cadences at the end of sections, mainly to indicate a change of key. Melodies. Depending on the period of the music, some sections have distinctive melodies. Some music may change texture between sections. Now we know textures monophonic, polyphonic, homophonic, heterophonic, or create significant textures at the beginning or end of sections. Words. If you have words, repeated texts such as a refrain or a chorus can be used to give a piece of music structure. We often label different sections in the music with letters such as A, B or C. This makes it clear when a section is repeated. For example, A, B, A, three sections, where the second section A is the same as or very similar to the first section A. Binary and ternary structure. Binary form AB. Binary form has two sections. It was commonly used by the Baroque composers, especially in dances. Binary form also followed some conventions in terms of tonality. Section A begins in the tonic key, ends in the dominant key, and is usually repeated. So if I'm in C major, it will start in C major, it will end in the dominant key, that is G major, and I will see the repeat sign. Section B begins in the dominant key, that is now the new G major, and then turns, returns to the tonic key, C major. Ternary form, ABA. Ternary form is made up of three sections. It was commonly found in the minuet and trio in Baroque dances. It then evolved into a movement within the classical symphony. The, repeated, the repeat of section A is not always exact, but is very close to the, second, to the opening section. So ABA, the second A, is very close to the first A. A phrase is a short musical idea, like this. A phrase is often described as like a sentence. If we take a few of these phrases and put them together, we get a section like this. Because the section is a few phrases or sentences put together, it's often described as a paragraph. But a song will have more than one section, like this. The word 
both form and structure are used to describe the order of these sections. There are different types of form and structure. You need to know binary form and ternary form. Binary form is a piece of music with two sections. That's A and B. A. Ternary form is a piece of music with three sections, but the first section comes back or turns around. That's A, B, then A again. A. B. A again. In both forms, you can repeat sections. For example, AABB is still binary, and AABAA is still ternary. Now let's have a look at ritornello and rondo structure. Ritornello, ABACA. In ritornello form, the section A returns between each new section, and that we did in Baroque music was commonly used in the Baroque period, the ritornello section A would often return in keys related to the tonic, for example, the dominant or rel relative minor. So they will play around with A. If you look at A, if the first A is C, maybe the next A is G, and maybe the next one is in um, A minor. If the original section was long, it would often return in a shortened version. So they're also going to play around and change it slightly. The sections between the ritornello sections are called episodes. Ritornello form evolved into rondo form. That's why we do this together in the classical period. Ritornello form can be found in many concerto grassis, such as Johann Sebastian Bach's Brandenburg Concerto. So ritornello form is a form that we have done in Baroque period. So go to your music papers and just read about the ritornello form again. And maybe they've got examples there that you can listen to. Rondo form, also A-B-A-C-A, -A, but we now know that it evolved from the Baroque ritornello form and was often found as the final movement in a symphony, sonata or concerto. Section A returns in related keys. A ritornello is a recurring passage in Baroque music for orchestra or chorus. Early history, the earliest use of the term ritornello in music referred to the final lines of a 14th century madrigal, which were usually in a rhyme scheme and meter that contrasted with the rest of the song. Scholars suggest that the word ritornello comes either from the Italian word ritorno or from tornado. Baroque music, the ritornello as a recurring 2D passage can be traced back to the music of 16th century Venetian composer Giovanni Gabrielli. According to Richard Taruscan, these repeating passages are endemic to the concertato style which Gabrielli is credited with developing. The idea of an orchestral ritornello played an important role in the structure of opera in the 18th century. The most common form for an aria during the Baroque period was da capo form, which essentially consisted of an A section followed by a contrasting B section, which was in turn followed by a return of the A section. Many da capo arias could be subdivided further, with ritornello sections framing each of the singer's solo sections, forming the scheme R-A-R-B-R-A-R. The ritornello was also crucial in the development of the Italian instrumental concerto during the Baroque period. Giuseppe Torelli wrote many violin concertos in which the fast movements used a recurring ritornello in between two extended solo passages of entirely new material.
that when the music changes you But you know and I know it won't be long Before A comes back to shove it along I know, you know, Rondo is all about A When the A part just won't go Also know the da capo aria ABA was commonly found in several types of vocal music including operas by composers Handel and oratorios perhaps the most famous is Handel's Messiah the capo aria is where the voice returns to the top of the movement da capo and repeats the first section of the music it was commonly for common for solos to add ornamentation when the first section was repeated he was despised from Handel's Messiah is an example of a da capo aria. It's important to remember that everything that happens in a Handel opera and operas from this time are at the service of the singer. This is singer's music. And composers responded to this by creating works that were loaded with arias, opportunities for singers to display their vocal talents. The main method for allowing singers to display their vocal talents was through arias. In the Baroque period, there's a standard structuring device for an aria. It's called a da capo aria. Da capo means from the top or from the beginning. And it's very simple. We have a line of text, and the composer writes music for that particular line of text. bit of text. It may comment on or contrast the previous line of text, and the composer would write different music for that. Then at the end of that second section, the singer would see the instruction da capo, or da capo a piacere, which means to the beginning at your pleasure. The return of the music at the beginning was not written out. The singer was expected to take that melodic material and improvise an ornament on it at their pleasure. Singers were not allowed free reign. When you read singing treatises from this period, they're always admonished to ornament gracefully and with taste. 